I'm Wait a minute. Syndicate. Live from Syndicate MMA in Las Vegas, Nevada, <laughs> Jonathan Parsons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, my, my dad was in the military. You know, we, we didn't move around too much, but I, I was born in Biloxi, Mississippi. We, we lived in Arizona for a little bit, Tucson. And then, uh, and then we moved to Vegas about 2002. So, you know, I just, uh, just a regular kid, you know, about high school time, you know, you know how teenagers get, get into different kinds of stuff. And, you know, a lot of the kids I was, uh, growing up with were, were getting into, uh, some bad stuff. So, you know, I, I'm blessed. I was able to get into the gym and kind of be around more positive people and, 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 and start to learn about the whole fight culture. Um, you know, Vegas is, you know, it's kind of like a party city. And I feel like that kind of translates into the, into the high school. So like in high school here, you know, lots of fights, you know, drugs and, and, and different things like that. And, uh, you know, after school, you know, instead of doing homework and stuff, kids are, you know, smoking weed, backyard boxing and, and different things <laughs> like that. And, and honestly that, you know, after school, I was doing like a lot of like backyard boxing Oh, with different shit. kids from from you know around town and you know it was more of like just like a fun thing but then it's like okay well who's gonna box who's gonna box who you know and i, I was always the one be like all right let's go let's go <laughs> you know with the biggest guys and, and and whoever and one day um i happened to get like you know do some backyard boxing with a kid who was training in the gym um and you know after i bopped him up he said, "Hey, man, you, you, you should you should come check out this gym. Come train." And uh, when I started training there, I realized it was the gym was a little bit different than the way he made it seem. And I learned pretty quickly that you you got to earn it. You know, you got to go in there, put in the work, and almost in a way where like, you know, trainers almost don't even respect you or take you serious. You can go into a gym and be like, "Hey, man, I want to fight." You know, and, and now being a coach. Now, I like, I hear it all the time, you know, and, and some people try to fast track it, but, you know, you, you, you really got to earn your way through. And, and I did. It was more of like a fitness type of gym, but it had a legit Muay Thai trainer from Thailand. Um, his name was Master Chan, um, the trainer of uh, Kit Cope, Gina Carano, uh, Marvin Eastman, and, and I'm sure at your time at Vanderlei, so you've seen Vanderlei um, hitting mitts with Master Chan here and there, and also Michael Costa as well. Yeah. He was hitting mitts with with Master Chan, so yeah, that was my my first trainer, and um, you know, I, I I got I trained two hard years, you know, before I got the respect from them for them to actually book me a fight, you know, and and I think it was better that way because you know some people got to learn the hard way, and I definitely learned a lot of things the hard way, but it was nice to go in there early on, and 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 have the skills and ability to put people away. Yeah, yeah, it's different, uh, and it's kind of cool because all, most of the people we have on, they have kind of the same backstory, you know, like, well, I wanted to get into something, and I didn't like sports, so when I was younger, you know, my parents let me try karate or kung fu or whatever, you know, the case may be, and, and uh, you know, you were already in high school. Did you have any interest, like, other than probably, like, we all did ninja movies and, you know, <laughs> blood sport and shit when you're growing up? <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I was was really into a, a lot of those uh, martial arts movies. And what's funny is that growing up, like I was really into Jackie Chan, Jet Li, and all, you know all those uh, all those martial artists. But for some reason, I couldn't get into pro wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> and like now, going back, it's like man. And I, I think pro wrestling is cool now. I enjoy it. Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't go out of my way too much to watch it, but anytime I see anything that's pro wrestling, I'm like, wow, this is pretty entertaining. Yeah, and I'm thinking, man, when I was a kid, what was my issue? If I can enjoy Jackie Chan or Jet Li, it's not real, you know. Right. <laughs> why, couldn't, why couldn't I enjoy wrestling? You know. Yeah, I watch all the wrestling documentaries. Uh, <laughs> like like all these obscure people all their documentaries I, i'm like i don't know why but i have to watch them like the struggles of coming up is, is a you know a, a wrestler a professional wrestler and how shitty they have it and all that stuff it's like yeah 
it, it may be fake in the big screen, like, you know, once they get big time, but the the grind they have to go through is just like any fighter. It's, you know, their training is rigorous. They're, they have to be accepted by trainers. They have to find a show. They have to be a journeyman, like, like early Muay Thai fighters and things like that. Like, show up and hopefully you can get on a card, that type of thing. And that's really interesting. So you were at that gym uh, that you started at for two years? Yeah, Fossey Sports. Okay. And then, like, Kurt, Kurt and I were talking before, and Kurt was like, I know he trained with a Thai before he came to Vanderlei's. Yeah, it, it, it's kind of funny because I, I think I, I don't think I met you too many times, Johnny, but I remember just um, – I forget. We were doing a drill – and uh, I remember, I think you were throwing a low kick. And I'm like, man, there's something to this dude's low kick because he's not hitting me hard. But, like, I could feel all your weight transfer in it. And I, I remember asking you about it, and you were saying that you, you had a tie coach. I'm like, oh, okay, that makes it that makes sense, you know, because I think, you know, getting with those tie coaches, they had, I don't know, they just have a thing about them, you know, where they're just so technical and they're so good at, you know, teaching all those little things that I think get lost a lot of times, you know, in some of the MMA gyms. Oh, definitely. You know, what's funny is, is you mentioned low kicks. Um, this week's uh, curriculum that we worked on was was all low kick stuff. And, uh, you know, it, it's funny because the calf kick is very, it's like a fad right now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's fundamentally different than the, than like a Thai style low kick. But definitely, uh, it, it's crazy because anytime you're kicking above the waist, it's almost a completely different technique than kicking below the waist yeah you know what i mean like when you're kicking above the waist you know you want your legs tall you're on the balls of your feet you're pivoting but when when you're doing a good low kick you know you're not going to do like a step and pivot you're gonna you're gonna drop right into that low kick with your body weight and you got to be quick you know um i think there's a lot of people out there like one technique i i I i'm not a big fan of is when people like kind of whip that low kick around and try to come up and down Mm -hmm. And me being like super big on defense, like I feel like that's so easy to check. And like people talk about like, oh, well, I'm going to kick over your check and kick down. And a lot of times it never works out. You know what? You know, it's worse than getting kicked in the calf. Kicking somebody with your own calf because you don't have proper, because you don't have the proper low kick technique. So this week I've been drilling in all the students like we got to get this low kick right, you know, because I'm if I'm calling out low kick because I've, I've been kind of. You know, I've been kind of trying to promote, like, hey, we don't, we can go hard, but you guys don't have to hit each other hard to the head. Yeah. But go hard to the leg, go hard to the body. And then I also told them, hey, another thing to think about, the body shot or the leg kick you're forcing is not the one that you're going to put them down. The one you're going to put them down is the one you set up and the one you time. You know, so I'm trying to, you know, I want people to, to get that intensity, but at the same time, People don't gotta sit there and 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 try to knock each other out in the head. But hey, man, if you land a good body shot and they take a knee, like I, I like that. I like yeah. that. But like yeah. Friday nights, um, is like the the harder sparring night for the students, you know. And I like I build them up all week. We're kind of building up to this night, and then we do we do hard rounds. Everyone mixes it together, and then uh, I kind of like we like make a little little circle Thunderdome type thing and. <laughs> We match the we match students up, you know, to, to spar in front of everybody and uh, really cool vibes. Yeah, it's like that's actually a pretty cool concept. I mean, um, when I was coaching out here, I was coaching at Henzo Gracie, and like the owners like no hard sparring, and I'm like, yeah, I get it, you know, because the vibe. I mean, where you're at now, it's a fight gym. Like you have fighters coming out of that gym. Where I was at. He it was a jujitsu academy, so I mean the the jujitsu program is huge, and I was building the the Muay Thai program, and then he's like, well, I don't want us, anybody like seeing people get knocked out or <laughs> like don't ruin my memberships, you know. So it's like, all right, but to have to have that where you you get everyone together and kind of match them up and let them go, that I think that's going to instill the confidence back in your students, you know, to be able to see like. To know that they can go do it, even if they're not the best, not the newest. But I'm assuming, I mean, I, just from like at Vanderlei's, like you, you got your team has to be pretty tight. That 
nobody's going to dog somebody if they have the balls to go in there and do it, you know? So you, you get that respect. And then once you realize, like, oh, I may not be the best, but, oh, well, you know, the guy that was the best was cheering for me. So that kind of, like, gives you that confidence. You know, coach said, oh, good job. I don't know how many times I'm training in Thailand and I'll be fucking tired or something. And you do something right. And you get that, oh, and you're like, ah, all right, I got that right. You know, and it kind of gives you that little extra something. So that's a cool concept. I really haven't heard anybody like do that with their classes, you know, in that type of style, which is kind of like almost like Friday night fights. You know, it's like put them in there. Everybody's supportive and and it gives a good look for the students. That's pretty cool. Um, What was I just going to say? Oh, so you were saying, so you went with the guy that you were training with had trained um with was he a kind of a pad holder for michael or did he train michael so um master master chan was more doing it was more like like pad work um for for costa and, and vanderlei and it was um you know he was showing him some tricks and stuff like that i think it was kit cope who introduced uh Master Chan to Vanderlei because I know Kit Cope had a little bit of a relationship with Vanderlei when he uh, first opened his gym here in Vegas. And I think that's who linked them together. But yeah, you know, a couple little tricks, but it was like, it was like mainly pretty quick pad work. You know, mm-hmm. Master Chan would be in, do the pad work, and be out. So Kurt and I have had this discussion. Um, so basically, how it went is we all trained at Vanderlei's. Um, and we'll get into kind of when you left and things like that. But Kurt left because Kurt was my main training partner when I got like a million percent into jujitsu and started competing all the time. And so Kurt was like one of my main training partners. Kurt would travel with me. We would go to all the tournaments together. And then Kurt one day comes in and goes, hey, I'm going – I'm quitting my job. I'm going to Thailand. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, what, what the fuck are you talking about? He's like, yeah, I quit my job. You know, he had a good like normal job. And I'm like – what the fuck? And so he, he's like, yeah, and I'm leaving. I don't know. It was like soon. It was like within a month or something like that. And he's like, I'm out. And I'm like, ah, cool. Where are you going? <laughs> and so we, I kind of followed that. And then I went. Uh, so Kurt was over in Thailand. And, and then I got, I'd wanted to go. But I still was back. I was focusing all on jujitsu, And I wanted to go to Thailand. And I, I, more for the experience to travel and things like that. But when I got there and Kurt and I went to Raja, you know, and, and we experienced the fights and I was like, fuck, there's a culture behind this. There's so much more. And then to see actual Thai fighters. And then once I kept going and, and started training and you're like, this is totally different than anything that we experienced in the States. Um, so what I'm asking is kind of like you had traditional Muay Thai before you came to Vanderlei's, right? Yes. What was your your perception of when you got to Vanderlei's of that Muay Thai? Because Kurt and I have this conversation all the time. Is once you go and you see how authentic it is, and then you come back, um, it, it's it's not the same sport. <laughs> it's not the same training. It's yeah. not. It, so, like, how did you feel once you got over there? What was like? Yeah, there, you know, there's <clears throat> there's a lot of there, there, there is a lot of differences, but then there's a handful of you know similarities. Uh, my biggest thing that was was hard for me, um, you know, and, and it and it, it's it's more of a focus now. But uh, they didn't really like me to check body kicks. Mm-hmm. They only want you know, Michael, you know, only wanted me to check low kicks, and like they were like big on blocking with their arms. And I just thought it was really funny because. Um, one of the one of the coaches there, fighters, uh, Vitor Viana, he had he had gotten his arm broken in a fight against Tiago Silva. So I'm thinking, all right, they already got a guy that's got his arm broken in a fight, and they're still drilling like, hey, you know, you're you know, <laughs> block with your arm. Yeah, you know. But I just think at the same time too, there's not, you know, maybe they're not getting kicked by someone who really knows how to turn it over and, and drive that shin. You know, you you just you can only take so many kicks to the arm, and like like my my mythology uh, is, I kick the arm first. That's where I'm aiming. I'm always kicking the arm. If if I see it's open under the elbow, I'll go for it. 
if the head's open, I'll go for it. But like my default spot to kick is like right on the arm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes closer to the wrist, but like sometimes I just like driving my shin right into the forearm. And, uh, you know, a, a technique I notice a lot, like, you know, people try to do it. And sometimes when I see that they're doing it, like I slowly kick them harder and harder because I see them sitting there trying to time it. But a lot of people try to time like you, you get kicked in the arm. And then you fire back with that two, three, and add a kick at the end or whatever. You know what I mean? But I just felt like, man, don't sit there trying to wait for me to kick your arm to try to get that punch. Because <laughs> if I'm really, if I'm kicking for real, you're not gonna, you're not gonna want to take that kick to the arm. Yeah, you're, you're throwing that after a while isn't really gonna work. <laughs> I've got my right here. <laughs> like, you don't want to, don't want to face the camera. You don't want to shoot. Beautiful face. Who was that? <laughs> oh, he's, oh, I got the kettlebells. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good stuff. That UFC legend, Mike Powell. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, yeah. so you you were at the gym uh, with us, and now I don't remember when you left exactly, but did you leave around the same time as all the other fighters? I left right before... Like that went down, so that like some some stuff kind of went down when the you know Mike uh, Mike Smith left, and uh, <clears throat> and that was that was kind of around the same time I had went to Thailand. So by okay. the time I had uh, come back from Thailand, everyone kind of like went their separate ways. You know, um, the two guys that did stick there, and man, they're they're good. They're 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 pros now. They got good records. Um, Marco Simmons and, and Josh Quaylen. Yeah. So like those two dudes stayed and man like when i see them when i see the videos of them training i see like michael costa clones yes exactly I, I like i liked his style i like the way he put things together and i always appreciated how clean everything he did like everything was like the same like every time he punches it looks the same you know what yeah. i mean like really like really robot <laughs> yeah and, and it's crazy because marco and josh like they have that same look and it's like, man, you know, it, you know, it worked out for them. You know, they really, you know, that, that good for them that they stayed, and, you know, and, and it shows like their technique shows. Yeah. Marco was always fun training with Josh was not. <laughs> <laughs> Josh is a monster, man. We're drilling and it's like, all right, take the kick to the arm. Michael Costa <laughs> told me, yeah, kick harder, kick harder. I'm like, I'm just like getting kicked in the arm. I'm like, this is not how I block. <laughs> <laughs> I remember just, I remember rolling with Josh one day and I, it must have, it was in the gi because I was going, I had like, I always use a baseball choke and I went and baseball choke him and Josh just like muscled his way out and about broke my arms off while he was just pushing <laughs> me away. I was like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> but he was, I mean, such a nice guy, but my God, when you start training with him, he's, he's a just beast, a monster, man. man. He's, he's crazy. Yeah. So did you get involved in any of that kind of uh, situation that was going on to get everybody to split up? Did you, did you kind of know what was going on or? No, I just, I knew a little bit, some stuff was going on, but I know, I know the biggest thing was that, uh, you know, a lot of those guys, they, they depended on, on, on Mike Smith for guidance and, yeah. you know, like almost kind of managing them, like getting them fights and stuff like that. And then I, I remember I was there for this little meeting with the coaches and the management and they're talking about how, how Mike's no longer with the gym. And like people, they were asked, like people had questions, people got to ask some stuff. And I just remember them saying like, yeah, you know what I mean? All that, all that stuff that Mike was there for you guys for, like, you're going to have to do it on your own. Really? You know? <laughs> so like, I know that there was a lot of guys that like, you know what I mean? They got a dream. You know what I mean? They like, they, they need a team. And, um, you know, I know that that was uh, like the main reasoning for a lot of them to leave. And then I, I, I think it was Chris Gomez. I had asked him something <laughs> about, uh, you know, like, oh, you know, should I, you know, I'm going to go check you guys out at Syndicate. Like, you know, I, I, I'm going to go talk to Michael and, you know, just, you know, have some words. And, hey, you know, I'm, you know, I'm leaving yeah. and stuff like that. And then he, he had made a comment that he had did that and it didn't go too well. Mm-hmm. You know, that there was still some, like, you know, feelings and stuff like that. So then I kind of avoided doing it. You know what I mean? 
But, yeah. you know, um, I've ran into Michael plenty of times. Like, you know, everything's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, and that was kind of like the Brazilian way that we all got taught. It's like once you leave the gym, you're the enemy. <laughs> you couldn't train at another gym, and you were the you were like you were cast out. And it was same thing as when Kurt and I would go train. Like we'd we'd be going to tournaments in Cali, and we would have to kind of say, "Can we train at these gyms?" You know, and like they only wanted us to go to Kings, and we uh, were going to um, Chuck Mat, and they were like, "You shouldn't go there," and we're like why <laughs> they're like well those guys are too big they'll hurt you or some shit and i'm like kurt and i trained there and the, and joao assist was nothing but nice to us he put us with his best guys right before we had like worlds and stuff like that he would he was always so welcoming he was coaching kurt like against one of his best guys and it was like i've never had a bad experience visiting in another gym but we were so like instilled in that if you leave you're a traitor and that was the big thing when all the amateur team left is like, well, fuck all them. They, they left us. And it was like, yeah, but those were like my homies. Those are the guys that we trained with every day, you know? Like, like, I was in a position, I don't know how, I got to train with all you guys. Like, it, it, we, you know, just my timing or whatever it was is I got to train with all the fighters, you know, like coming in and out of classes and things like that. It just, it just worked that way. And it was cool because... I, I, maybe because I was older or whatever, I wasn't treated like a new guy as far as like, you know, some punk coming in off the, the street and, and the, the young fighters had to tune me up or anything like that. It was always very respectful. I was always respectful to them. It was super cool. And that's a thing that I tell everybody we have. If you don't go into a gym that has that feeling, that vibe, you're, you're missing something. Because like what we had at Vanderlei's before all that fell out, that place was fucking amazing. Like, the vibe to go in there, and you knew that you had 15, 20 homies in there that were, like, ready to get down, but it was all, like, love and respect. Like, you beat the shit out of people, but those were your guys. Like, they would do the same thing for you as they're doing to you. You know, like, we went to the fights, and, you know, you see, you remember the pictures of the fights. There's 30 of us back in the back rooms that were getting kicked out every five minutes you know <laughs> we, we would all get kicked out and come back in you know uh, it was it was such a cool time and then when it all kind of fell apart they started doing weird shit with like leandro and they started like the gym just kind of got all jumbled up and it was kind of it it definitely lost something when that happened you know vandalay started to distance himself and you know, all the other fighters, and it was like we weren't allowed to see the other fighters. And I remember um, Khalil coming back after he went to Black House. And I was like, I was going into training, and Khalil was in there, and I'm like, I haven't seen him in a year. And uh, he was talking to Michael about where he should train when he came back and he wanted to come back. And I don't know the conversation, but Khalil ended up over at Syndicate. So <laughs> obviously something didn't work there. Um, but so after, like... So tell me about, like, your first trip to Thailand. Like, how did it come about and stuff like that? Yeah, you, you know, that's funny because I got some questions for you. Because, <laughs> and you know, what's crazy about my, my trip to Thailand is that, like, my trainer said, yeah, yeah, you know, my friend out there, he, he knows English. He'll take care of you. I remember getting picked up from the airport. And, like, this guy calls his friend. <laughs> it was like, oh, lady, lady, speak English, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, what? And then, like, so, like, yeah, I'm talking to this lady on the phone, and, like, I'm translating all this, like, we're just, like, she's translating this conversation between us, and I'm like, yeah. I'm like, holy shit, like, what am I getting into, you know? Yeah. And then, yeah, there was, like, there was a lot of me not around anyone that spoke English mm -hmm. for That's that four months. There was a lot of it. So, yeah. like, there's a lot of me no, not knowing what the hell is going on. Yep. You know what I mean? So, I, you know, I show up in the train. They say, oh, you, you, you want five tomorrow? Yeah. Like, oh, okay. You know? So, I ended up, like, getting six fights out there within a three-month time period. Um, but I was out there for, for four months. And, uh, you know, it's pretty. So, 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 some questions I got for you is that, uh, so, I trained with the Thai Army. Oh, okay. So, like, I didn't, 
I didn't really fully understand it at first. And it wasn't, it wasn't until like, you know, after the experience that like, okay, I think this is what was going on, you know, because, but no one was speaking English to me, explaining to me what the hell was going on. I just kind of had to make my own, my own story for, okay, I think this is what's going on. But basically, you know, because kids start fighting so young, right? Yeah. So by the time it, it gets to the time where you have to do your mandatory military service, mm-hmm. you could be a ranked Muay Thai fighter. Yes. <laughs> you know was doing it. <laughs> oh, yeah. So like, that, you know, so, like, there's some crazy stuff with the military going out there. And it's like, you know, the military there is pretty powerful. I used yeah. to have a friend who used to always tell me, Ami, number one. <laughs> <laughs> it's you know, we, sometimes we'd be doing stuff that maybe we weren't supposed to do and i was like kind of sketched out like aren't they strict here like i don't know if we should be doing this and he'd be like no problem um, <laughs> number one yeah would, army number one dude and i was like okay I yeah trust <laughs> no th- and that that's the things like i know people that own uh clubs <laughs> and things like that and so the businesses get extorted, especially if it's like a nightclub, like a, a the the go go bars and stuff like that. They get extorted, so the the police will come in and raid the place. And if there's any violations, the the owner or the manager has to pay out money. And but they have connections where they know when the police is coming. So one of the guys was telling me he's like, yeah, police, no problem. I pay them off. They they go away. And he goes, but we never know when the army's coming. And he goes, if the army comes, we're fucked. They close us down. <laughs> so it's like police, you kind of just, ah, you know, pay your, your fine and you're good. But I, everyone's afraid of the army. <laughs> if they're yeah. kind of like the, the big dogs. <laughs> yeah, hey, uh, J- Johnny, when you. Mm-hmm. I, I was, I was going to ask you because I think I was right behind you when you went to Thailand because. Um, when I got there, there was a, I went to um, Team Quest in Chiang Mai, and they're like, "Oh, I think he, one of our guys fought a guy from Vanderlei's, the, this guy Glenn Sparv. and I was like, yeah. I'm like, I don't think so, because <laughs> the guy I'm thinking of, he's he's not like he's not a welterweight, you know what I mean? Because or it might even be middleweight. I don't I don't remember, but I I remember being like, I don't think he's in the same weight class. <laughs> no, no, no. But you know, I kind of I kind of got a little. A little chubby before I had went out there, um, so I was okay. a little bit heavy. And that's crazy, but because my first fight, my first professional fight, was against that guy. <laughs> oh, the the very first week I got to Thailand, on one day notice. Oh my god! Yeah, and he already he was already six and two as a pro. Yeah, Glenn's a beast too. So I was like, yeah, that's a tough fight to take on one day's notice. <laughs> yeah, so. You know, Definitely, you know, I, when I went to Thailand and I accepted a fight on one day notice, I, I wasn't expecting to get Chael Sonnen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, like, after going online and reading some articles and stuff, like, they really hyped me up to be something I wasn't at the time. And he, in the articles, it, it talks about his game plan of, like, oh, he wants to show his wrestling and his ground and pound and all this stuff. And, um, it was kind of a weird stoppage. I had got cut, and, like, I was kind of confused of what was going on. Like, when they stopped it, I was like, oh, my God, I, there must be a huge cut. Cause sometimes you don't feel them. Yeah. You know what I mean? You don't feel them. I'm just like, oh, it must be huge if they're stopping it because we're in freaking Thailand. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But then I saw some videos online, and I actually see my trainer waving it off. And you know who I ran into? I ran into Dave Hewlett. I don't know if you ever met him at Vanderlei's. He, was, he kind of visited a couple times. Um, he's a pro fighter from Vegas. I think he actually might have been he didn't he might have been doing more training at Syndicate Throwdown or Warrior at the time, you know, okay. before it was Syndicate. Um, but I happened to run into a dude who's from Vegas at that fight <laughs> and he happened to have a corner. But uh yeah, it was uh I had seen my trainer like like waving it off. You know what I mean? And like I was like, Oh wow, weird. And, and you know, kind of made sense. I had just been there for a week. He yeah. barely met me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He's gonna get you murdered. <laughs> he'd never seen an MMA fight in his life. You know, this is back in 2013. There wasn't really too much MMA in Thailand yet. And uh, yeah, he was just like, "Whoa, you can hold them down and punch them on the ground." <laughs> and you know, he didn't know me, know how tough I was. 
You know what I mean? Um, like, I was still in the fight, but I just think he, he knew we were going to have to pay for the cuts ourselves. Ah. And uh, I just think he didn't want me to get cut anymore. And his job was to take care of me. So I'm sure, like, once the fight started going sour, he was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and that's probably different being that it was an MMA fight. Uh, like, because I don't even know how they would bet MMA. Like, you know, compared to betting Muay Thai, like how how uh, the betters have so much influence with the money going around with Muay Thai, they're not going to stop that fight. <laughs> they're going to make sure you keep going if it's Muay Thai. And they're going to, somebody's making a shitload of money off of it. So being that it was MMA, you just got there. Yeah, I've gone in, I mean, Kurt probably had the same thing. I've gone into a gym for, I just happened to be in, in a certain place and I'd be like, oh, I want to train today, go into a gym. And they go, oh, do you want to fight? And I'm like, yeah, we have fight for you. I remember I tell Kurt that they had. I went to this gym, not even a big gym, and it, and they're like, uh, "Oh, you want fight?" And I'm like, oh, eventually, you know." They're like, "Oh, can you fight this weekend?" And I'm like, "Yo, it's it's Thursday. What are you talking?" about? And I'm like, "I just came to this gym." And they said, "We have a we have a fight for you, same size." And then they go, "How big are you?" I'm like, wait a minute, you just said you have a guy the same size. You don't know how big I am. And then he's like. <laughs> How old are you? We have one, uh, someone same age. You wait, you're asking the questions in the wrong order. <laughs> so they're like, uh, you know, they'll set you up and, and they'll get you fights. You know, you, you get a lot of the tourist fights and things like that too. So it's one of those things. But yeah, so like, I know they'll they'll put you in there if if you say yes, you can fight in Thailand, like no doubt. <laughs> I was constantly asked, "You want fight?" Yeah. <laughs> like, man, I can't say no. Like, even now, like, um, I'm managed by uh, Iridium Sports. And, uh, you know, I've kind of known the guy who's the agent. He's been at Syndicate for a few years. So, we, you know, we, we built up a relationship over the few years before I was uh, officially signed by them. And, like, he knows better than to ask me. Like, he, he knows if he, asked, if he asked me if I want to fight. Then I'm gonna say yes. Yeah, you know, <laughs> or if he gives me the name, I'm gonna accept it. So what? So like so right now. Go ahead. I was saying, uh, um, I have something possibly lined up for March 13th, but I don't think we've heard a response from the other camp. So I'm kind of bummed because I feel like it's it's you know my topology has had a bunch of hits since they've had my name. Yeah. So, like, I think he's yeah. been looking me up or, you know, him and his team or whatever because, like, my topology has a lot of hits that someone's been searching me. Um, but I haven't heard back from the camp. And it was, you know, I was kind of, I've been excited for the fight. Like, I, I hope it goes down, but it's a Muay Thai coach versus a wrestling coach. You know, a guy with a Muay Thai background versus a guy with a wrestling background. So, uh, you know, I just think uh, if I can't beat, a fighter like him, maybe I don't deserve to be in the UFC. So uh, my management, they, 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 they pretty much have, have told me um, one more win, you know, and they can get me on Contender Series this summer. Oh, nice. So you know, they told me, like, what are you doing? Like, why are you going to match up with a state champion, three-time state champion wrestler and wrestling coach, you know, solid grappler? But it's like, Man, there's a lot of can crushing going on. Yeah. And and, and yeah. Like, like I said before, my first fight was against Glenn Sparve. My first pro fight was against Glenn Sparve. So, you know, I, I'm not looking for those easy fights. But, you know, it's kind of disheartening to see their camp take so long to respond. You know, because there's, a, like, there's just a lot of people just trying to take the perfect route. You know? Um... And, you know, I, I don't mind the hard fights. I want the hard fights. I won't name names, but we, all three of us, know someone that we were in, in the same gym with that had a very large record of fights <laughs> 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 that were kind of... I appreciate, um, I appreciate him and his dad. They, they, put, they put a lot of my amateurs on their card, so... Uh, yeah, they, they they take care of me and, and oh, I fought Shoney Carter on their promotion. What? <laughs> really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Someone fell out. 
and then they had they had asked me like, "Oh, you want this fight?" And four weeks out, I said, "I'll fight Shoney Carter." Hell yeah, that's awesome. It was, it was crazy. I just remember being in the back room for that fight, and I was like, kind of preparing myself, like, "All right, you know, the takedown's gonna happen. I gotta be ready to grapple." I wasn't even thinking like KO, KO. I was just like, "All right, he's gonna get me down, and I can't." You know, I gotta keep grappling. I gotta grapple back up to my feet, and then like. Not even 30 seconds into the fight. Boom! It was over. <laughs> they were cool. Him and his dad were... I never had... I always... They were always cool. Except for the, except for the one time I brought a Lamborghini to the gym. <laughs> I brought a Lamborghini to the gym, and he make this comment. Why the fuck would you drive somebody else's car? And he didn't realize that I drove it. And I was like, that's one of my client's cars, and I brought it to take one of our younger students for a ride that had never been in a Lamborghini. And he was like, oh. And I was like, come on, man. We've never had a problem. Don't be a dick. (laughs) One of my sons, you know, sometimes he'll see a fancy car and he'll say to me, like, oh, dad, is that a Lamborghini? You know what I mean? Like, like, if I was, like, you know, that's a nice thing to do. Like, young kid. Yeah. You never seen a Lamborghini? You never been in one before? Like, come check this out. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, not yeah. Like, no, that, it's not like a show thing. It's like, you know, experience this. It's cool, you know? Well, that's, yeah. That, it was, uh, you remember Abe, right? Little Abe? Abe, yeah. Yeah, it was him. Abraham. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I had right. told him, like, what I did, and he's like, oh, man. And I was like, oh, I'll bring one of the cars by. And,. You know, I had a client that would just, like just drive whatever. You know, you take my car, do it. You know, you're good. And so I asked him, and I took it to the gym, and I took Abe down the strip in the Lamborghini convertible. So it was like, and he was still really young, so it was cool as hell for him. <clears throat> All right, so I know you only got like ten more minutes. So you get back from Thailand. You you've got your fights. How did you end up at Syndicate? Like in the position you're at now. Yeah, so, you know, first when I came back from Thailand, you know, the majority of the guys, especially the ones I, w- I was close with, um, they were up at Syndicate, and I was like, well, you know, I, I'm ready to go to this. I've always wanted to, like, go there and spar, but with that whole, just like what you said, yeah. that whole amateur yeah. fight scene, like gym versus gym, it was, you know, cross-training wasn't, wasn't looked upon very nicely from coaches at Vanderlei's. Yeah. So... You know, but I'd always like, man, I like I would always see their pictures, like sparring day pictures, and like, man, I, like I want to mix it up with those guys. So sure enough, I, I started going there. You know, sparring Chaz Multi all the time, and a handful of other guys. There's, you know, there was always guests visiting, so lot, lots of good sparring from there. And um, yeah, I just kind of been at Syndicate, putting in work. Um, initially, when I first started coaching, I was, I was helping out with some kids' classes, and then. Um, AJ Matthews at the time was running the Muay Thai program. And I think over the years, I've always been close with whoever was coaching Muay Thai there. And they know that I have a background. So sometimes I'd substitute classes and stuff like that. And, uh, so eventually I got to a point where I, I was teaching some kids classes and then got an opportunity to, uh, help out with the adult class and, and get some of the adult classes on my schedule as like, you know, trainers were, were leaving and, and moving on to other things. Um, and then, you know, I t- took a little break from coaching for a little bit, but then this past summer, um, I was asked to take over the, the whole Muay Thai program and, you know, I was like, yes, you know what I mean? I'm ready to do this, you know? So it's been real awesome. Like right now I've got such a great, consistent bunch of students, um, that are showing up all the time. They're listening, they're improving. And so it, it, it's just awesome, man. I, I feel so blessed to be able to be here, you know? teach class, train, teach more classes, and, j- yeah. and just be yeah. around, you know, great people all the time. You're teaching a, a lot of fighters or more students? Like, uh... um, more, more, more students, a couple of amateur fighters, more of the students. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a couple, couple people I do, you know, privates with. Um, sometimes I, I, you know, do privates with Roxy. We go over some stuff and, and, and a handful of other people. Hey, uh, Johnny, do you still got uh, Tom Lawler over there? Is he still at Syndicate? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. 
Yeah, he, uh, <clears throat> I coached alongside him for like two, three months in Australia, so I got to train with him a, a little bit. It was definitely fun. That dude, that dude's like probably the strongest dude I've ever uh, trained with. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely a strong dude, and, and I love Tom too because over, over, sparring with him over the years, you know, obviously I'm the more experienced striker. You know, he comes from more of a grappling background. He definitely has experience, but. Uh, like sometimes I would ask him, like, "Hey man, like, where where have you been training? Like, where'd you learn this? Where you know what I mean?" And um, he's always making adjustments to the adjustments I make. So even though you know he's more of a grappler, more he comes from a wrestling background, um, he has a sharp mind. Where like, you know, something I did to him one day, he wouldn't let me do to him next time. You know. So th those are those are fun people to spar because like you always have to adapt because there's some people where like the same thing is gonna work against this person every time yeah and yeah. They're, yeah. they're not gonna yeah. adapt they're not gonna stop you and I feel like sometimes that can cause you to build bad habits or like maybe not try to do whatever technique you're doing better you know sometimes I tell the students sometimes too because there's a mixture of levels and some people some people like you know. They go a little harder or not, and I'm and some, or they have bad habits, and I'll say like, "Hey, man, you can do that like that to someone who's not good." Yeah. yeah. Someone who's good, you're gonna have to clean that up, and you're gonna have to do that right. And I always use that as an example. Like, I'm like, "Hey, yeah, you know that's cool. That looks fancy. You're doing it, but like, the person you're doing it to is, you know what I mean? I wouldn't, I wouldn't use that as a gauge, right? If that's yeah. an effective <laughs> technique or not. You know what I mean? Like, you say yeah. you start doing yeah. it. Like on Saturday sparring against someone who's like who actually fights pro or something, then we can talk ab about the effectiveness. But like you doing it on this person who, who's only been training for a few months, like that's not the move. You know what I mean? Yeah, gives you a lot of false confidence. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah, sometimes it's weird. Sometimes I gotta like, I gotta like mix people up. You know, and I just think it's in general. I just think sometimes people shy away from the hard rounds. But see, the, yeah. the hard rounds are, 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 are what get me going. Like, if someone does good good against me on, on pro team sparring, um, next time I'm like, okay, how am I going to, you know, do better? But there's some people that, you know, you, you give them a hard time, and it's like they don't ever want to spar you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're like, you need to partner up, and they're like, ouch. <laughs> yeah, you know, that, that, that's a problem sometimes for me. Because um, definitely, too, like, recently, maybe the past year, I really started to find my balance of like how hard to kick people and sparring. Um, but definitely there was a point in time where I, because I was babying people with my kicks so yes. much in the gym that like when it was time to fight, I like, I couldn't get my kicks off in the fight or they just wouldn't be, you know, the vicious kick that needs to be thrown when it's like do or die in a fight, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I talked to a lot of my students when I was, was coaching about that is because when you go to sparring, uh, you have to turn up your kicks more than you turn up punches. You get tagged in the nose. It sucks no matter how hard you get hit. If you get a good kick, people walk through it. They're kind of like, ah, that didn't hurt. And it's kind of like, no, if I had kicked you the way I want to kick you, <laughs> that would be way more difficult for you just to blow off. But because you get more inexperienced people that aren't just, they aren't going to respect it. So that, you know, you, you kind of have to turn the kicks up to kind of gauge with the striking. And obviously you're not blasting anybody, but you're like, Oh, you should know that that would have really hurt you. Yeah. But see, I don't, I don't give the people that option. <laughs> I just crap out of them. You know, and, and, and that kind of plays into that technique where like people like they think that they can just take a kick to the arm and then like fire back two, three. It's like, yeah, maybe if someone's like, Cricket kick and karate style, or, or they don't know how to kick through. Yeah, you know what I mean. Because that, that's another thing I noticed too is like um, the, the Muay Thai kick is sharp. It's a sharp kick. It's not. It's not coming around. Yeah, like the, the turning. The turning of your hip happens into the target, not like before it reaches right. the target. Right. You know what I mean. So that's definitely like a little detail I'm trying to uh, instill into the into the students. And the one thing though, the sharp kick. It's easier to check, but it's harder to see. You know what I mean? 
So because it kind of comes right up. So if, if you're setting it up properly and you're timing it, they're not going to be able to check it. But like definitely if someone's kicking your head, trying to aim for your head sharp and you get that good wide body check, sometimes it'll hit the shin before it reaches that maximum height. You know what I mean? Yeah. Be a takeaway from kicking sharp. But, it, you know, the name of the game is adapt. You yeah. got to adapt yeah. to what's going on. You know, yeah. so maybe, maybe yeah. in a certain situation, you're going to have to kick kind of wide and around and go around someone's guard. But a lot of times I, I, I feel like it's important to kick sharp and fast and with your hip so that they can feel that weight. And, they're, and just like what you said, they're not just walking through your kick. Make right. them respect right. your kick. Right. Well, that's like uh, one of the one of the privates that I did in Thailand was uh, with Manichai, just because I was like, I want to learn Manichai's low kicks because he was TKOing people with low kicks, <laughs> and it's like I was like, I want to go and train with that guy. I trained with him a couple times, and it was just like, all right, I want to do an hour of just your low kicks. Like two and a half hours later, I had Sanchai and a couple other guys like coaching me with him. I was like. You can't get any better than this, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I know you got to go. You got class coming up, Jonathan. But um, anything you want to promote, you want to put out there, your social media, the gym, your classes, anything like, feel free. Yeah, definitely on on, on IG, uh, Jaw Knee Parson. <laughs> You know, it's funny thing is out there in Thailand, they, they really they, they would say my name like that. Yeah. Oh, Johnny. Yeah. Johnny. You know, that's what that's what made me think like, oh, like a jaw and a knee, you know? I never had thought about it like that before. And then just the way they would pronounce my name, I'd be like, oh, yeah, Johnny, you know? <laughs> uh, that's, that, that's, that's where that comes from. And um, yeah, definitely, you know, anyone from all over, if you guys want to come check us out at Syndicate, um, you know, definitely during this pandemic, you know, there, where people had the opportunity to not work and, and collect some money and, and go around, you know, I've definitely had some people come from all over and like train for a little bit, whether it was like a couple months or a week. So, uh, yeah, if anyone's ever in town, want to come by, you know, Saturday open sparring, good mixture of skill levels. And, you know, I'm also, you know, teaching class three times a day, um, five days a week at Syndicate. So. Nice. The only thing I have to promote. <laughs> Good deal. Sweet. And if you have, that's all I do. <laughs> if you have anybody, any of your fighters coming up, or anybody at the gym that uh, you you want to get on, and just hit me up, and and we're more than welcome to like. If you have a young fighter that you you think would be good to get you know them a little exposure or something like that, we're more than happy to have everybody on. You know, from uh from the, from the what's that? Maybe have me on again. We could talk more Thailand. Oh no, we definitely oh, will. Yeah, yeah sure. definitely. When you have some more time, we'll definitely get you back on. That's that, that's uh, for sure. But Jonathan, thank you so much, man. It's good to see you again, and I hope you have a great day. We'll talk to you later, buddy. Okay. All right. Have a good. All right, but Jonathan, have a good one, bud. See you. Thank you once again for listening to the number one combat sports podcast, the Fight Chase Muay Thai and MMA podcast. You can follow us on Fight Chase on all the social media, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. And also, don't forget you can support us at any time. Go to the anchor.fm backslash Fight Chase, hit the support icon, and you can support us for as little as 99 cents a month. We truly appreciate it. Thank you for listening. And Kurt, don't say boom. Boom. Chase. So today what I want to talk to you guys about is Project 52. Project 52 is a new project that I'm going to embark on hopefully July, August type of time when I get back over to Thailand. So most of you have known I left Las Vegas, came to New Hampshire, and then was basically living in Thailand. Um, came back for some visa stuff to the States and COVID hit. 
So now here we are over a year later and we're just waiting for the travel restrictions and things like that to kind of ease back so I can get back to Thailand. But today we're talking about Project 52. Project 52 is something that I have dreamt up that I want to do and I want to do with all of you. And what it is, is there's 52 weeks in a year and I'm going to visit 52 gyms in one year. So what I'm going to do is one gym a week for one year. Um, these are 52 different locations all over Thailand. I want to go up north. I want to visit some gyms that people may have never heard of. Um, lot, there's so many gyms that people have never heard of. So I want to go to, I'll bring you to the big gyms. I'll bring you to the small gyms, gyms that maybe no one's ever seen. Um, I'll just do these research and find these gyms and, and bring you guys to that. So this is a project that obviously I can't do on my own as far as I'm going to be doing all the recording, all the editing, all of the research, scheduling, traveling, all of this on my own. Um, the only thing that I'm going to need you guys to do other than enjoy all the content is the financial part. And if I had the money, honestly, I would just do it on my own. So I've set up a few different things that if somebody wants to help um, back this and, and kind of join in on the journey is we have first we have t-shirts t-shirts really don't do much as far as um put too much in the money um if you buy a t-shirt i believe i make probably five dollars but that five dollars is is appreciated it'll go right into the fund for the project um while i'm doing this whole project i'll be doing uh, writing an ebook the travel on um, the experience and um, probably on um, maybe all the gyms and then section them I'm not sure exactly how that's gonna go I'm um, so again that'll be one of the, the products that's gonna come out of this um, I'm going to be doing a I'm looking over here I apologize it, it's where my notes are um, I'm going to be doing a video of the training from each gym just like I do now, but this is 52 gyms weekly content will be put up. So if I go to a new gym, you'll have a new video of the gym, um, kind of a tour of the gym. You'll have a new video of the training at the gym. You'll have um, more artistic line photos with my nice DSLR. I'm going to take photos of each location. Uh, you've seen some of the gyms that I've done and I did it at um, some arts gym, I did it at 13 coins, I've done some at Fairtex, like real nice high re resolution, kind of more artsy type um, photos that people can enjoy, like Instagram looking photos. So you'll have a weekly journey recap. So it'll be me talking about how I got to these places. If you ever travel around Southeast Asia, you sometimes will get into cabs or a bus or a specific kind of vehicle to get somewhere that's not really known to other people so it's it's, it's part of the journey um, I rode a bus in Cambodia that had no seats they had bunks and it was like an overnight bus and after I rode it everyone was like oh it's super dangerous and I'm like well, it wasn't very comfortable either um, so like I said we have the shirts they're um, available through fightchase.com shop and it's project 52 shirts obviously and the other shirts there they also will benefit this project because this is where all my money is going to go um i'm going to be doing a patreon it's already set up so the patreon you have different levels of support anywhere from ten dollars up to it, it, and it's a monthly subscription so you'd be paying you know that amount of money going towards the project monthly um I also want to do a GoFundMe, kind of to get the project known, um, and, and you'll be able to donate there, it, it, like a, uh, a one-time thing. Um, the Patreon is, a, is an overtime thing, and there's different tiers, and the different tiers give you different things, like there's a tier that you'll get a t-shirt, there's a tier that 
your name will be in the credits to all the videos. There's a tier that you're the main sponsor. Um, then you basically, your brand company and or if it was an individual person, would be marketed alongside of Fight Chase as the journey would be brought to you by them. Um, I kind of think of it similar as like if an athlete was sponsored by Nike, you know, they're the main sponsor and that's who's giving them the financial backing to embark on their journey. Um, so that's kind of the financial steps as far as I have figured out so far. Um, all of these will be set up, the, like I said, the Patreon setup. We have Venmo and all that stuff, so if you, get it, you just wanted to kind of donate a few bucks or, or something like that, that you could send that over to me and, you know, it goes directly to this fund. This fund isn't going to be used to anything else other than making this 52 gyms in one year, 52 weeks, uh, a success. Um, another thing that we'll be doing as we as a me, um, but if you help donate, you're part of this project, you, you're going to embark on this experience with me. Um, you could even dictate kind of where you want to see next. If I'm in a certain region, if you've heard of a certain gem, like, hey, can you try this? Another thing that I want to do, I have a lot of friends now. I have a lot of friends in the industry. I have a lot of fighter friends. I have a lot of friends that go on vacation to Thailand. They're like, oh, I'm going to go for the Muay Thai holiday. Great. Hit me up. You can become part of this project. You will be with me. I'll take you to a gym. We'll record the whole thing. You'll be a special guest. Um, I'm going to have some of my friends that are there, athletes, fighters, and things like that, um, join me on these things. So you'll have a different point of view. You can have a, a me as, as a, a trainer from the States, as a uh, enthusiast, my point of view of the gym, and then you can have in the same um, episode uh, a UFC athlete, um, their point of view of the uh, their point of view of the gym. So it's going to be kind of like a whole series. I mean, this is 52 weeks. 52 weeks is more than most of your TV shows will put out episodes weekly um, that we'll be putting this content out. We, me, um, along with your help. So I'm trying to, anything else, I apologize. But I'm just trying to speak to let you guys know exactly what I'm trying to, to do. So you've seen a couple of posts that I've had up about Project 52. This is Project 52. Me, back in Thailand, 52 gyms, 52 weeks, okay? One year of training, that's it. Now, you get to watch it. You get to have a say on where we go. You get to enjoy the experience. You get to see the, the ups and downs. The, there's gonna be possibly injuries and sicknesses or who knows you know it, it's a crazy adventure um all of this will be put out in video content weekly and you know this is something that i i like to do the reason i started fight chase is to get people to understand that getting over to like thailand or wherever your your ideal destination is it's not that hard um, when we talk about Thailand, like on the podcast, so I started Fight Chase after a few uh, trips over to Thailand, and, and Fight Chase was fightchase.com. Um, if you've gone there, that's just my gym reviews, product reviews, where I came from. It's kind of like the epicenter of Fight Chase. And then I started the brand, so we had Fight Chase to shop. So that's just where you can get merchandise like this. Ooh, if you know this logo, shame on you. That's okay. I know it too. <laughs> and all sorts of different like cool martial arts type of uh, shirts and things like that. I have hoodies. I have, and these are all designed by me. I, I come up with the designs. I figure them out. I've learned Photoshop. Same as I've learned all my editing for doing the YouTube channel. Learned how to edit all the videos and that's gone over to the podcast we've had amazing guests on the podcast if you haven't listened to the fight chase podcast check that out we've had john wayne parr khalil roundtree jr um we, who do we, we just had i mean we have so many episodes that i haven't even put out yet they're amazing fighters and uh, i have um, dj jackson i have um 
Batman. I have uh, Mark Matthews from Ink Master. I have uh, man Savas Michael from One Championship. I, I, we have so many uh, people coming up, and we've had so many amazing episodes that are already out. So check those out. But I learned how now we're putting out videos with those. Okay, so I've learned that aspect of it. And, and, and it, I, what I do with all this is I just want to give you information to help you maybe take a step to make a journey to to see that we need to be out and we need to experience things, you need to meet new people, experience cultures, travel. Like, we're not made just to do the 9 to 5 and be stuck in your house like we have been. So they couldn't think of a better time to really go for this ambitious project. Is As soon as I'm able to travel to be out of this situation again and back into where I'm the happiest in Thailand I want to bring all of you with me I want to bring everyone with me if you don't even help support this financially please just join the journey um, but this video is just me trying to show you the passion that I have explain the journey what we're gonna have to do to make it happen gotta make some money unfortunately but people get money to play video games on TV so um, I was hoping that we can make this get rolling I have a few businesses that are looking to come on board I mean I have always had great hope uh, product wise with like defense soap um, and a few other brands that have kind of given me product support so this is gonna be a big thing that it's gonna be a financial thing um, all of my money is gonna go to it for the next year to make it happen and you know that's what it is project 52 guys let's get it happening if you come to thailand you're part of the show if you're at home you're enjoying the show so thanks you guys for listening hope you understand how much this means to me and let's make it happen have a great day Ladies and gentlemen, this is the one.